Hi. Hi. So, we're on. Question. We're on. Oh. <laughs> if you have a question for me that you want just me to see, you can put it in the chat to me. Got it. And then okay. I can answer you. But yeah, That's we're right. live. We've got 37 okay. people and counting already in our group. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so it's all happening. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody coming in. We're going to get started in just a minute. Yeah, the first time I did a webinar, I didn't realize I, like the yeah. minute I hit the button, we're like, <laughs> we're, we're going. Uh, <laughs> so should I mute all? All right, everybody is coming on in and in the interest of everybody's time, we're going to get started right away so that um, we can get this evening underway and um, hopefully answer a lot of questions and have some time to take some questions also. So um, I'm Julie Parks, I'm your principal and welcome to senior year. Uh, very, very exciting. Um, that we have arrived and so really looking forward to a great year with your students whether they are physically here at Miramani or just adorable little faces over the zoom screen um, we are definitely looking forward to seeing them being engaged with them and helping them navigate this um, really exciting year and it will be exciting no matter what we have in store for us because this is a big moment that we're that we're getting started on for our seniors so um, before we get started, I want to just orient everybody with the webinar tonight and then have people introduce themselves. So first, I'm going to start by saying um, Sarah Harris, um, our wonderful associate principal, is here in the room, but she's like behind the scenes. Um, her job tonight will be to monitor the question and answer box. You'll see that at the bottom of your screen in the center. There's a little icon that you can click. And parents who are in the webinar can submit questions. Sarah will do her very best to answer as many of those as possible. And after each of our speakers, if there's anything that remains that we that we need answered, we will um, we'll call on Sarah to give us any of those questions and make sure that we get everything answered for everyone by the end of the evening. Um, so that's what Sarah is up to um, there in the background. But the rest of us will be in the foreground um, for at least part of the presentation. So I'd like to do some introductions, um, starting with our counselors. We have two counselors in the meeting today. Hi, I'm Rebecca Watson, and I'm the counselor for students with last names A through FIL. We're super excited to be here tonight and get to talk to you all about senior year. Hi, I'm Sarah Feinberg. Uh, my alphabet is SCH through Z. Um, I also do NCAA and Cyber High. And also here we have our college and career advisor. Hi, I'm Stephanie Brady. I am in the College and Career Center and I'll be speaking to you with a lot more detail later. It's good to a see you. A lot more detail. I have a feeling you're gonna be popular tonight, Stephanie. Am I please? <laughs> Um, we have um, some parents joining us. We have some class advisors, so I'll let them introduce themselves. Sorry, it's muted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather Grenning. I'm one of the class advisors, and Sheila Eversall is one of the class advisors. And then we also have a representative from Parents Club joining us tonight. Hi, I'm Clay Dean Hart, uh, and with the Vice President of Fundraising for uh, the Parents Club, and also on the One Board. That's right. Um, so you'll hear a little bit about what's going on in that area. And then we have our students. Um, we have two students in the room this evening, and actually you all are going to get to present to us first. So I'm going to turn it over to our students to introduce themselves and also tell us a little bit about some of their goals for this year and things that they're planning. Uh, so I'm Matthew. I'm the uh, senior class vice president, and here with me is Haley, who's the uh, president. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Haley. Um, so this year, everything's obviously very different. Um, but we have made we've brainstormed a lot of ideas to try to keep the class together during COVID. So we've planned um, online zoom activities to just bring the senior class together. 
We also have the senior ladies shirts. Um, we're gonna do an activity, a bonding activity, socially distanced hopefully at school. And we are hopefully doing a holiday wreath fundraiser with the parent advisors, which we'll touch on more later in the meeting. Um, I'll pass it over to Matt again. Uh, yeah, so we have a couple of other events that we're currently planning that we're hoping we'll be able to bring out and bring out more information regarding that in the future. So at the moment, we're planning on doing something where we'll be able, for the seniors, we'll be able to paint parking spots at Miramani because we believe that that would be something that will bring us together and it'll be a fun activity for us to do. We're also planning on doing a caravan around Arinda. So we would, so everybody would get in their cars and drive through Arinda. And we think that doing things like that would, uh, would really help bring the seniors together, especially in this time when we can't actually be at school together. Um, and we're still planning normal senior events in the case that we can have them. So ball and graduation is all being planned. Um, also a note for the parents and students, um, follow the class Instagram. The username is Marimani class of 2021. Um, this is the best way to communicate with the senior, um, the seniors, and it's the most active platform. And also, our senior shirts are going to be reopened for sales in mid-September, so definitely look out for a date for that on Instagram. And yeah, that's all. And yeah, feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any questions, suggestions, or ideas that you think would be good because we're always open to more ideas. Thank you guys. So I met with some of our upperclassmen in leadership earlier this week and we started really brainstorming. Um, we really mean it when we say we are open to all ideas. There, we're, we're not saying no to anything. If we can't do it right now, we're putting on the list to put on hold for later um, as things start to change and the situation evolves. But our students are really thinking about things that they can do um, maybe in some very creative ways to, to bring students on campus. But this idea of decorating those parking spots, um, I think it's a good one and it's gonna stick. So we're looking forward to putting that on soon and bringing the kids back in small safe groups um, but still back so they can be near each other and at this place they love um, and get to um, really connect with Miramani. So I want to thank our seniors in leadership because they're taking on a big lift this year. So um, they, uh, they're doing a really great job. Okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and mirror my screen. Students, you are welcome to stick around, but if you've got homework to do and you need to leave the Zoom space, feel like you can. I know you've had a long day on Zoom already. Great. Okay. All right, and now our parent advisors. Oh, here we are. Okay, our main job this year is just to support the senior leadership and try to think of some fun activities outside of the box that will be allowed. Unfortunately, some of our normal things like senior class barbecue and parent socials and uh, what else do we typically do in the fall? The snack shack are not gonna happen, but we're still able to do a couple fundraisers. Um, we're going to, do wreath sales and coordinate with Bob's Trees in Raga, and we're looking for a parent to help us with that, if there's anyone who wants to take that on. It's something that's done every year, and I think it's pretty easy. We just get a percentage of their sales. Uh, the other fundraiser we have is the care packages that we always do for finals, and we already have someone in charge of that. Um, some other things to remember are just start collecting photos, for your memory boards that will be passed out in January. Um, Nikki Zabetian is in charge of that. And then all the important dates will be posted um, on the 2021 class newsletter, the weekly Matador News, the Miramani High School Parents Club website, and our Instagram. Um, Sheila, anything to add? No, I just think it's a, you know, hard year to navigate so far. And we're gonna do our best, as Julie said, to make it as fun and memorable for these seniors. And um, you know, as soon as things open up, hopefully we'll be able to 
be more creative and, you know, pack more things in towards the end if it opens up. So I hope it's a great senior year, however we can pull it together. Thank you very much to our parent advisors. This is a really tough job, even when everything is normal. And um, it's especially challenging this year, but um, we've got great representation there. And I know that this team is gonna make great things happen for our kids. So looking forward to working closely with you. You're not alone. I'm gonna work with you on the activities. Um, talk to the class of 2020. I talk to those parent advisors every day. So we're gonna be in each other's phones and talking all the time um, to make sure that we make this a really special year for our kids. It's really important um, that we do that. And I just want everyone to know that personally, um, I'm, I'm making that commitment to all of you to make sure that we are able to preserve all of the traditions that we can and create new wonderful traditions um, for things we need to adjust. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right, Clay, you're on. Thank you. Hello again, everybody. Um, I just saw that there's a thing called senior reflection on the list. I think that's actually what's happening with my head. So once we, uh, <laughs> once, once I get done, I'm going to close my, uh, uh, my uh, camera and uh, sit in for the rest of this. Um, so look, you guys have all been around uh, for now, what, 13 years? Um, you know what parents clubs do, uh, you know how we work. Um, I will tell you, and Julie, you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, yeah. This is uh, really important this year. Um, you know, this year, the one big change that we've made uh, is moving away from having two donations and EFO to having uh, one donation through uh, one, through the Arenda Network for Education. We've made it easier for everybody, just as we're all getting ready to leave. Um, but hopefully that making it easier for this last year will help us to get what, what we need to really support the school. Um, and I think as I've, as I've been doing these seminars for the last couple of weeks, the, uh, I, I have to say, I think probably what we do as a parents club is more important. It's important for all the classes, but it's probably more important for seniors than for anybody else. Um, the parent advisors are all parts of, part of parent club. Um, the money that we raise goes to the kind of classes uh, that seniors take. Um, the money that we raise goes uh, to college and career services, um, to wellness, to help our students get through this last year when they're, you know, unfortunately already missing out on the uh, many of the important things that are important for senior year. So, um, you know, every year it's important when we ask to help try and raise the money that we need to fund mere money. Um, even though we're seniors, uh, your money is going to be, your donations will be spent this year to get your seniors through this year. Uh, and I don't know that there's been a more important year also because we know there's going to be families that um, are, are hit harder uh, by the corona apocalypse uh, and are going to need help. And so as a community, we really need to step up. Um, one family that already has this year uh, is the Odemark family. And uh, when Stephanie is talking to you in a little bit about um, what's going on at College and Career Services, one of the things that we're really, really proud to be able to announce is the Odemarks have stepped up with a $30,000 donation that's going to be used over the next two years to provide even uh, deeper and greater College and Career Services for your seniors uh, and for the juniors that are, that are coming up next year and hopefully launching a long-term project that Julie and Stephanie are working on to, to make college and career services uh, mirror and rival uh, those that are held at some of the really, really expensive private schools that we all happily avoid by having a wonderful school like Miramani. Um, so that's my pitch. Uh, I am going to put in the chat box uh, the link on the bottom that you see on the bottom of my presentation here um, and send that to everybody. Uh, because that has a lot more information about the specifics around one and the uh, and how we're spending the money that we raise this year. But I do encourage all of you to help us uh, get your students through the senior year um, and my students through the senior year. And thank you all for all of the support that you've given us all over, hell, the last 13 years of doing this. Thank you. All right, Clay has done that spiel four times now for all of our grade level meetings. 
Um, so I want to give you a special appreciation for showing up for all of those meetings, Clay. Um, you do it better than anyone, and that's why you got the job. But I do really um, value your time and um, and your message is so important. So um, Parents Club is working really hard. And I think one great thing about having an organization like Parents Club um, that funds on a local level the way that it does is that we have so much local control over how those dollars are spent. And so we're able to be really fluid and dexterous about how we spend the money, which this year when everything changed and we had to really look at our budget through a different lens, we were able to pivot very quickly and redirect those funds into the places that we knew that we really needed them, like college and career support, um, like ensuring that we have enough technology resources for the classroom experience to be great for our kids and for our teachers to be able to adequately use the tools they have to give great instruction. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to do that without the ability to um, shift our resources so quickly um, and under identified local priorities. And so I really value that about this community and just really appreciate everything that everyone's done to make um, all these wonderful programs happen. So thank you so much for that. And so parents, you are free to go for this evening. Um, you can certainly sit in the Zoom room, um, but you are welcome to sign off um, if you'd like to as we continue the presentation. All right, so we're gonna go into counseling now and uh, Rebecca and Sarah will take over. Thank you, Ms. Parks. So this is the current counselor breakdown for this school year, along with our contact information. You can also find this information on the school website. One thing to note is that Ms. Connors is now back from maternity leave. Um, we were super lucky to get Ms. Alvarado during the time that Ms. Connors was gone. And like I said, she's back now, so we're happy to have her. Um, we have all emailed our students with information about counseling during distance learning, which includes a link to sign up for times to meet with us. So please encourage your students to use that, um, whether they have questions or just wanna check in. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about individual senior meetings on our next slide. All right, so the counselor role for senior year. One thing we do as counselors for senior year is we hold individual senior meetings. So, this is a super exciting time for students as they're starting to prepare for life after high school and to help support students along their own individual journey. We meet with each of our students one on one to discuss their post high school plans and next steps. So these individual senior meetings are currently underway and I can say it has been so great getting to connect with our seniors. Um, all seniors should have received an email from their counselor with a link to sign up for a meeting time specifically for their senior meeting. So if you all could help remind your seniors to sign up if they haven't already, that would be great. And if none of our available times work, please have your senior reach out to their counselor and we'll find one that does. So something that we cover during senior meetings is the plethora of options that students have to consider after high school. So some of these options for our students might include two and four year colleges, a gap year, military, vocational school. Um, and these are just a few of the, the common options that we see our students pursue. Another component of these senior meetings is Naviance. So since we are meeting virtually in this new COVID world we find ourselves in, um, counselors are sharing our screens with students during those meetings um, and reviewing how students can request letters of recommendation, transcripts, how they can add colleges to their list of colleges they're applying to on Naviance. Um, so we are more than happy to review this information as many times as we need to with our students. And I will let Ms. Feinberg take it away on the last few points here. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Um, so we just wanna remind you that we're available for application and essay help and feedback. We're here to support your students through this entire process. Um, so we wanna celebrate every accomplishment with them throughout the entire thing. So we wanna celebrate finishing their first essay. We wanna celebrate submitting their application. Um, and then of course we wanna celebrate their decision-making process as well. Um, they can make appointments with us through the links that we sent out in the email at the beginning of the week that Ms. Watson just touched on. And Ms. Brady will be talking more about some essay support in our academies in the next slide. 
Um, the second thing is sending a secondary school report. For those of you who don't know, a secondary school report is just information about our graduating class, a little bit about our school and the student GPAs. Um, we send these off with your senior supporting documents. And I also want to remind you that we did add a COVID update to ensure that schools understand how our grading system worked for the spring. Um, also, if your student needs a letter of recommendation, please have them contact your counselor as soon as possible um, to ask if we would be willing to write. Most of the time we would love to. Um, and then lastly, we monitor senior grades and performance throughout the entire um, school year. We are new to, uh, to, to Canvas as well, so please be patient with us. Um, but we are learning how to monitor all of your students' grades and we will be following up with them if they need any extra additional support. So thank you to our counselors. Um, this, um, they really mean it. This whole first quarter is really like devoted to your seniors. Um, and so they are already um, reaching out, putting out that email. If, in case you didn't hear it, I'm gonna say it again. They sent an email to all of your kids. So all your kids have an email from the counseling department reaching out about how to set up appointments. We've had to get a little creative about how we do this this year because our kids are on Zoom classes during the day. Um, we're not pulling them out of those classes um, because we know how important that instructional time is. And so we've um, built in a lot of different options on the calendars for the counselors so students can figure out if they have an open period, they can use that time, they can use an early morning time or an afternoon time, um, or if they have a class that they can um, miss a few minutes of, they can, they can leave that class. But we're trying to create a lot of opportunities for students to get in and we want to meet with all of them. And so go ask your child about the email from the counselor, take a look at it, find that appointment slot. Um, if you don't get to it, don't worry, they're gonna be looking for your kid and finding them and making sure that they come in. Um, but I want to thank them both for being here this evening. Um, Rebecca Watson has been here for all four nights also um, and stepping up as our lead counselor while Ms. Connors was out and so really appreciative to that. So thank you so much, Rebecca and Sarah, for being here tonight. And now on to college and career. Are you ready, Stephanie? I am ready. I am ready. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm sure you can't even believe that it's already senior year and college is very much on your conversation list at home, I imagine. Just so you know, we have been extremely active in the College and Career Center. I would even say more so than in past years at this time, which is exciting to know that students are still recognizing that this is a place they can come even though they can't physically walk in here. So that is one of the things I miss though because I used to have students just kind of popping in at all times of the day to ask questions and um, I miss seeing their faces and being able to really connect with them that way. However, I am very confident that we are still connecting in a very real way. So kind of what's happening right now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I am going to be running a senior parent night for seniors with regards to the college process on September 10th. And those details are on a future slide. But what I really want to cover is just to kind of let you know what is happening right now and how both your students and you can reach out to me for help. Um, thank you to the Odemark family for really taking, taking some trust, putting some trust in my office and recognizing that by um, giving us additional funds that we can really build this program out. It's really important to me to be able to meet students where they are and to be able to deliver a program that's extremely unique to the individual because I do think that when it comes to college and post-secondary planning, it really is about meeting everybody where they are. I mean, everyone comes to this with a different perspective, with different desires, and I wanna be able to really cater to that. So that money is, um, enabled me to have two additional people on a part-time basis in the College and Career Center. Jennifer Mosier and Ariel Taylor are joining me this year and they, are be, they will be a big help going forward. Um, so I am very grateful for that, for that um, donation and trust me, it will go to good use and your students will actually, the current seniors are gonna benefit from that currently too. So in terms of what's happening right now, I've been meeting with a ton of seniors and one of the main topics that we're talking about are how do we start to finalize those college lists um, or start them if we haven't because that is certainly happening to some. Essay help is probably our biggest focus. So essay help can, help in, can happen in one-on-one um, -on -one meetings. It can happen in the academies that are going to be taking place starting next week. So I really encourage you to um, encourage your students to sign up for those academies. 
applications, applications, applications. There are many applications that are currently being filled out. We are guiding them through how to answer those questions, especially in light of COVID. There's a lot of um, questions coming in to me about whether or not we should write essays on that or how do we talk about how I was impacted by it. And so I'm really guiding the students through those areas. And financial aid, I think more than ever, financial aid and scholarships is important. We've all been affected in some capacity on a financial basis with regards to COVID. And so I'm really keen, as a matter of fact, Ariel Taylor is one of the people who is going to be helping me focus in on financial aid and really honing in on our local scholarships. Mock interviews, I just put out an email last week that gave students the opportunity to start signing up for mock interviews. Colleges are still conducting interviews and it is always my recommendation if given the opportunity to do it, especially in light of the fact that there isn't going to be any other kind of one-on-one -on -one ability. Students aren't able to visit the campuses. So those mock interviews are really important in helping them prepare for either an alumni interview or um, an interview with an admissions counselor via Zoom back at the campus itself. Academy sessions, like I mentioned, will start to run next week. This past week and this current week, we have been meeting with all of the seniors in their um, counseling groups to talk to them about what they need to know with regards to Naviance applications and just getting them set so they're all starting from the same location and not missing anything in the process. But the Academy sessions that will run will run from basically next week through um, the winter break to the winter break. And they will include everything from how to fill out the UC application to the uh, Cal State application to uh, essay help to anything you can think of, they should sign up. So they will have the ability to do that. I have some extra help during those academy sessions. So we will be able to go into breakout rooms and really once again, individualize the experience. College rep visits. This is an interesting one this year because they are all virtual and getting back to what we thought was going to be this really great section of a Monday. Kids are getting inundated with things happening on Monday, but college rep visits are very much up and running. And I am excited to report that more than ever, we have colleges that have not been here before. So for instance, Duke University just signed up today. We've never had them here. They don't usually go to individual schools. Um, Mount Holyoke, another one that we don't usually see. So this virtual world is giving our school an opportunity to really be in touch with some of these college reps that we don't normally see, which I love. So your students are aware of them coming. I sent out a spreadsheet with all of the Zoom links, all of the rep uh, contacts. If you guys are interested in finding out who's coming, you can go onto your Naviance accounts and you'll see a full list there as well. And once again, Naviance support for both you as a parent and students, I'm very available to answer those questions. If you're having trouble getting into your brag sheet, which by the way was due today, but I'm sure the counselors would agree, they will give you a little extra time. But if you can try and get those parent brag sheets in by the end of the week, that would be very great. We'd be very grateful for that. So the counselors can start writing the upwards of like 70 plus letters of recommendation that they're going to write. So the sooner they have that, the, the quicker they can get started. Okay, next slide, Julie. Okay, upcoming events. I did mention that I'm gonna be doing a, ser a, parent, a senior parent presentation on September 10th. Hopefully you saw details and Zoom links in my communications I've been sending out recently. Also upcoming is a navigating the financial aid landscape. I bring in an outside expert in the area. He is interesting because he has both his college certification, college counseling certification, and he is a CPA. So he is actually kind of a unicorn in this area and brings a wealth of knowledge in how you start to navigate the financial aid landscape. And then one thing we started last year that was very popular and extremely successful was a FAFSA workshop. So the FAFSA form is the federal financial aid form that families are encouraged to complete, even if you can. Um, even if you have college funds already saved, I, I encourage you to complete it because sometimes colleges that are giving out merit aid also want that FAFSA form. So we had a workshop last year, again, with the same expert who came in for the presentation on financial aid landscape, and we work one-on-one -on -one with the family. So it's a smaller group and we work one-on-one -on -one with helping you complete that actual FAFSA form. There will be things that you are required to do beforehand, but be on the lookout because as that gets a little closer, I will start to send out details. Again, ongoing are those academy sessions, the college rep visits, and the one-on-one -on -one meetings with seniors. Just so you know how I start to communicate out to parents and to the students, I send out a weekly email. So hopefully you guys are getting that email. If you are not, please email me separately and let me know. 
It is a long email typically every, every week, but it does a really good job of capturing what's going on now. So one of the things I'm a big believer in, because this is definitely a marathon of a process, is trying to break things down into smaller pieces. I feel like it helps to calm the overwhelm, it helps to calm the stress. And so each week at the top, I break down what I think students should be focusing on for that week. And if they follow that, they will be in good shape. In addition to that, there are supporting resources and um, just information in general that I find very useful. One of the things that just came out today that will be going out, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but there was a um, decision in the lawsuit against the UCs in terms of standardized testing. And what it looks to be happening is it looks like the UCs are gonna be forced to go test blind for this year which is like breaking news hot off the presses. It may have hit the news tonight, I don't know, because I have not been home yet. But um, stay tuned for that because some of the UCs have already gone test blind, which is different than test optional. So that means if you submit a standardized test, it will not be considered in the application process. So some of the schools have already gone test blind, but it looks like there's probably gonna be a ruling that is going to mandate that all the UCs go test blind this year. So that's a really huge change. So. Um, follow my emails this week and hopefully I'll have some more information as it, as it unfolds. So I think that's it, Julie. I didn't have another slide, I don't believe. Um, I don't think so. And I think yes, that's it that, for me, but I'm happy to take questions if you guys have them. Yeah, so I think that Sarah has a few to send your way. Okay. Yes, so Stephanie, I'm hoping that you can speak a little bit to the secondary school report in terms of our copies provided to parents and their availability right now? So there's two different things. There's a secondary school report, which goes with the letter of recommendation and transcripts, and the, and the counselors could probably speak to this more specifically. That is, not, um, that is not something that is available to the parents because it's detail about your student. But there's something called the school profile, which we send out also with letters of recommendation from the counselors and the students' transcripts. And the school profile has the COVID section in it. Is that what the question was potentially about, about what's included in that? Um, the yes. school profile is on our website. So I believe, Rebecca, do you know where Manoa might have put the school profile? Off the top of my head, I am not positive and I don't want to give anyone inaccurate information. Okay, so we'll find out. It's also going to go on my website. I honestly just haven't had an opportunity to put it there yet. So I will just make a note to myself to put it up by the end of the week and it will be under the college and career website. Essentially what's captured in that school profile is information about Miramani in general. So, you know, how many AP classes do we have? What does the current senior class look like in terms of their GPAs and their test scores? What are our athletics like? Um, it gives a little bit of a detail around Arinda and what kind of town we live in. It includes also recently attended and enrolled schools from our recent graduates over the past few years and as well as our grading policy, that's always on there. What we did add to it this year though, from the district, the district put together um, some information for us to include on that school profile, which indicates that it was not, you know, I don't know word for word right now, but essentially that we went past, um, that we went credit, no credit for the spring term, that the students did not have the option of getting letter grades and that that was something that we did across the district. So that the schools are very well aware of the fact that that's what we did. And when we get into the parent um, education or the parent night that I'm going to give in a, in a, I guess, a little over a week now, we can go a little bit more into how students can start to reflect some of what they want about COVID, including that grading policy in their applications to just substantiate what the colleges are already getting. Um, I did want to just add, I just was poking around on the website. Um, and I see Sarah Feinberg nodding. She may have been doing the exact same thing. Um, and um, you can actually find the school profile if you go to the college and, and career tab, and then you pull down to counseling. Um, you'll see on the left-hand column, it says school profile brochure sent with official transcripts. It's right there. You can um, pull that up and um, have complete access to that. Thank you, Sarah and Julie. Other questions, Sarah? Um, Stephanie, just a couple more questions here. When is the FAFSA due? So the FAFSA is, my 
it, it's, it depends on the school. Um, so a good guideline is whenever the application deadline is, try and get the FAFSA form in by then as well. So if you have a student who is applying early action or early decision for that November 1, I would try and get the FAFSA form in by November 1 as well. And that goes the same for um, any regular decisions, usually by like that January 1st, January 2nd timeframe. For the most part, schools don't require you to have it until February, March, but it's a good rule of thumb to, to submit it when, you, um, sim when your student submits their actual application for admission. Okay, and then one final question here, either for the counselors or for Stephanie, in terms of locating the brag sheet, we've had a couple questions around where to go in order to access that. Can you speak to that too? Sure, I'm happy to take that one. So first and foremost, you wanna make sure that you're logged in with your parent credentials. If you try and log in on, as your student, you're not gonna see the parent brag sheet. So make sure you're logged in with your parent credentials. If you don't have those, send me an email, just put in the subject title, um, uh, need parent, parent Naviance account, and I will make sure that you're connected. Once you're in, up in the top right-hand corner, there is an About Me tab. You're gonna hit on About Me, and then it's gonna drop down and you're gonna hit on my surveys and then surveys not yet started and then the parent brag sheet will pop up for you. Big word of warning, if you're filling it out, please fill it out in a Word document or a Google doc first to save yourself the headache. When I did this for my first child, I did not know that Naviance timed out and I lost all of my work. So if you do it in a Google sheet, I mean in a Google doc or a Word, you can save it and then just cut and paste it in so that you won't have the frustration. Excellent. Um, good advice. <laughs> it sounds like something I would totally do also. Um, so great to have. Um, Stephanie is a part of our community and also here all the time. She is still in the office right now in college and career um, because she really is um, working really long hours every single day this time of year is her busy season um, uh, to serve our kids and make sure that they get the best that they can. Um, I wanna really recognize the huge contribution that the Odemark family has made to our College and Career Center. Stephanie and I have sat down and talked a lot about college and career and truly do have a vision for this to be um, a college and career center where you can get a very specialized experience for your child um, in a public school setting. Um, and so we have, we have some lofty goals and high aspirations and they're starting this year. Um, so please look for all of the things that Stephanie is gonna be sending out about um, the meetings and the one-on-one -on -one appointments with kids and the opportunities for us to really engage with each and every student through the college and career process. That is our goal, is to be able to serve each and every one of our kids. And so we're bringing in the extra staffing and um, Stephanie has the vision um, to make this happen. So we're really excited to see where that goes. So thank you to all of the counseling staff um, for being here. Um, you don't have to listen to me again, and you are welcome to, to move on with your evening. All right. The rest of you also don't have to listen to me again, but I hope that you do. I have a few more things that I want to run through um, this evening. And um, so as I was looking at this presentation and bringing it up from last year, um, usually I give, you know, some little tips and ideas about uh, what I think you should be looking for as parents this year as you navigate it. And um, as I was looking at the senior year, I sort of scratched my head a little bit because um, everything feels so different um, that at first I wasn't really sure if these same things applied or not. But the more and more that I thought about it, the more I thought maybe they're even more relevant than they normally are. So my first tip for you is to just give yourself up to the process. Um, and I think that as we've navigated um, a global pandemic, um, upheaval throughout our nation, um, smoke days where we could not go outside in August, looking forward and knowing that we're going to continue to have that happening through the fall, um, we've continued to have to put ourselves in that mindset of taking it one day at a time and just writing out this process and making the most of every moment. So as you go through this year with your student, um, 
spoiler alert, it was going to be stressful anyway. Um, this part of senior year is tough. There's a lot going on. Your child is going through huge transitions, trying to kind of place themselves in the place that they're going to be in the future while being really engaged in this moment, um, trying to step up to that escalating pressure, but also really wanting to enjoy time with friends. It's complicated. And um, so this was always going to be a little stressful. Now it just looks a little bit differently. So just take it one day at a time. Um, know that it's very normal this time of year for your senior, if you've not gone through this before, to see a lot of fluctuation in mood for your senior to have days that are like really great days where you're seeing like that senioritis creep in, days where they feel really overwhelmed and stressed, days where they just need to curl up next to you and put their head on your shoulder and have a little bit of a cry. Um, it's a lot going on for them right now and they're trying to process all of that and they're doing it, our kids right now are doing that in the midst of a lot of confusion in their lives. So it's gonna be a day by day process, but I wanna assure you that we are here with you. Um, so reach out to us, please let us know what you need. There is no question too small. Um, and if we don't have the answer, which we might not have in that moment because we're building Building a lot as we go. I promise you that we will do whatever we can to find that answer for you um, because that's what we do here and that's what we want for you and your child. The next thing that I want um, to remind you is to find joy in those little moments. Um, if your household does look anything like mine, um, you've had a lot of moments with your kids where you felt a little bit overwhelmed, um, but then there's been those sweet little moments where you feel a bit of gratitude for that extra time that you're getting with your child. And you are getting some really special moments with your senior right now that you may not have otherwise had. Some of them might not feel that special in this moment, um, but really just enjoy those little moments and them being at home and close to you and being able to spend that extra time together as a family. Um, we will get past this and they will move on and it will happen quicker than we think possible. And the last piece is to celebrate. Um, and I want to remind everybody that it's okay to do that. Um, as we went through last spring and we watched our seniors have to um, suffer disappointments with events that weren't happening, and we watched our juniors go through the same thing, having to lose their prom, um, it felt like there wasn't a whole lot to celebrate. And what I had to remind myself of is even though my experience as a student in school, as a senior or a junior, um, didn't look anything like the experience that our our kids were having, our kids were indeed still having an experience. Um, and it's theirs, all their own. And so have, helping them to find those little moments to celebrate and celebrating them with them, we can still do that. And so that's what we're going to be trying to do this year, even though things might look a little differently, to still feel like we can celebrate even if it's not what we expected it to be. So I want to remind you about your resources because we are indeed here. You've already heard from College and Career and our counselors. They are going to be like your best friends this fall. So reach out to them a lot. They are definitely here to support you. I want to remind you of some of the other resources that you have also. We have our Wellness Center. Um, our, that physical space is not open, but Andy Nishimi, our Wellness Coordinator, is working hard. We have a whole team of interns here and we are ready to provide services to our students. And and so if you're concerned for your child or seeing things get kind of tough and you're concerned about wellness, please reach out to us. Um, there's a lot going on and you just may need that support. If you go online, you can see the forms to make a referral for wellness. You can also reach out to your counselors to assist you with that. The next area is technology, and sometimes technology and our wellness seem really intertwined right now. Um, we've already gone through some exciting technological moments. We authenticated all of our Zoom accounts, which caused a little disruption for a couple days as everybody got on board with that. We are learning a new learning management system, Canvas, um, which is working great, but still has a lot of things that we need to continue to get better at. And we have, um, we have had threats of rolling blackouts already, um, and we're looking ahead to the likely PSPS events that will happen in the fall.
I don't have all of the answers to those things, but I do have a team of techs who are ready to help you with the things that come up in your homes. Brendan Kearney and Stephen Silkitis are available to our sister students with tech issues. There is a forum that's been put up on our website. I'm going to blast out a lot of new things this week with our different processes and procedures, and this will be one of them because we want you to know where you can go when you're having trouble with these things. Our APs, um, Sarah Harris and her um, counterpart, um, Bruce Duran, our new AP, are here to assist you with the instructional technology also. Academy, I'm going to talk a little bit more about, but it is still available to our students on Wednesdays and Fridays. The format looks a little different, but the, the essence of it remains the same. That is an opportunity for students to get extra help from their teachers. They have the opportunity to access them. Our teachers will also be tagging students who they want to come by for extra support. So you're probably already into this by now, but I just wanted to make sure that as we are beginning the year, we're all using language the same way so that we're understanding what's going on in this very different school environment that we have. So I'm just going to define a few terms here on this slide. Um, synchronous refers to work done together in Zoom classes. Zoom are our classrooms now. And when students are in synchronous instruction, they are together in the Zoom room. And that time is being used for direct instruction. And it's being used for students to have discussion. It's being used for breakout groups and group work. Our teachers are being really creative and trying a lot of new things every day to keep that time really engaging. Um, and and, and high level for our students. So when you hear us talk about synchronous learning, that's what's happening in the Zoom rooms. And students meet with each of their classes twice per week. They have to meet every single class period to take attendance, but you may see the amount of time that they're in their Zoom classes fluctuate. Our teachers are required to do a total of at least, at minimum, 70 minutes of instruction between their two periods every week. Many of our teachers are choosing to instruct during the entire period on each of their days. But some teachers may have shorter lessons because they're making time for students to do studio work or other things um, that they think are going to help them meet those learning outcomes at a higher level. So if you see your student having a shorter class one day, it's worth asking what's going on, but it may be that the teacher's choosing to divide up that time a little bit differently. Asynchronous refers to work that's done independently through Canvas, where our teachers will post lessons for students to do. Asynchronous work doesn't look exactly like homework. It really should be like a guided instruction through um, a different standard, but something that students can access on their own um, with reinforcement when they get into the synchronous class. On Mondays, our students check in in the mornings for attendance during their cohort, but then for the rest of the day, they should be engaged in asynchronous work. They should be working on that independent work posted by their teachers. And you can expect each teacher to post approximately 40 minutes of work for that day. Part of that has to do with our instructional minutes and making sure that we're getting in as much time of instruction with our kids as possible so that we're meeting those standards. Um, you can break that time up any way you want. Students have different ways of managing their time, but we have posted sort of a suggested schedule if you're trying to help your child stay on track throughout the day. Homework um, may also happen in classes. Our same homework uh, policy applies. There's up to two hours per class per week, maybe a little bit more for AP classes, AP classes depending on what they're doing. Um, homework looks like additional reinforcement of learning. So most of the time that's students working on practice problems, reading from a novel, um, reading a chapter in a textbook, the things that they're gonna need to have done to be able to really do that asynchronous work um, and really engage in their synchronous classes together. Academy, a um, little bit different this year. We're still offering it two times a week for students to drop in to get extra support. It's offered from 9 to 9.45 on Wednesdays and Friday mornings. It is not required for all students to go to Academy. But if students are tagged for Academy, they must attend Academy. If they don't attend, we are going to be following up for them. So if a teacher tags them in, they're going to need to show up for Academy to get extra support in that class. When students are tagged, they receive an email from their teacher that lets them know where to go, what the Zoom link is, um, and reminds them to show up in that place. 
students can also go into our program teach more and sign themselves into a class so that they can attend um, and to do that there are two places they can go there's a place on the website um, next to the pictures on the website there's a little menu on the side and one of those icons on the menu says teach more and if you go there you log in with their student id number and your network password and you are in the teach more program there students can view all the different sessions that teachers are offering with their zoom links in there as well and they can tag themselves into a session or just obtain the zoom link there if they need to know how to get into the class for academy so a little bit different this year um, but at the heart of it still the same idea of really providing intervention and um, support to our students canvas so much to know about canvas um, we are learning so much every day about canvas and you might be too if you're following along with your child um, canvas is a learning management system it puts all of our assignments coursework grades correspondence zoom links and other resources in one place so in the spring you may have found that you were juggling like seven google classrooms school loop also going into aries there are a lot of different landing places for kids and parents it looks a lot different now because we're able to put everything um, in one central location. Now, that being said, Canvas is super powerful. There are so many different features of that that we are just starting to explore and get better at. Um, and so there's still a lot to learn. Um, our teachers have been putting in a lot of time to really um, build those classes and get information rolled out. And now what we're doing is we're going back and looking at student feedback from our surveys that we've put out, feedback from parents and the surveys that we've that we've put out and received information about to streamline some of our norms on Canvas so that the experience is more streamlined for our students as they use the space. We know that there's some, there's some classes where the assignments are posted one place and then the other class they're in a different place. That gets confusing for our kids and our parents. So we're definitely interested in getting those things aligned. Over the next couple of weeks, I think that you can expect to see a lot of different shifts around and the user experience should get a lot better as teachers start to put things in more similar locations. Um, and if you haven't signed up for a parent account, please do so. If you go to our website, there is a link for how to sign up for a parent account. Please note that the app and the website version of Canvas on the parent end look a little different. And so if you're not seeing all the things you want to see on the app, try logging on to the web-based version and you may find that you're seeing more of what you need to be able to really support your child. So just a quick peek, I put this in the principal's message. Um, this was just after week two, so we hadn't had that much time with our kids. They took another survey just recently with the district office that we'll be getting data back from very soon. Um, this is what kids had to say about Canvas. Um, kind of a meh, like in the middle rating with kids, um, but trending towards the positive. We're hoping to push that graph um, even further down towards, um, towards the positive end. Um, with some of the shifts that we're making, but this is telling us that's an area that we need to look at right away. So things to know about Zoom, students must have authenticated accounts. It seems like all of our students have figured that out. The reason for the authentication was because it um, makes sure that the only people who can get into our Zoom sessions are people who have our AUHSD schools domain. That really secures those spaces and makes sure that they're safe for our students and we're not having any friend from the outside come on in um, to those sessions and disrupt the learning opportunities. So that was a little bit bumpy as we got that authenticated, but I think we're over that now um, and feeling much more secure about our classes. Norms on Zoom, um, cameras should be on. We wanna see our kids. Um, there's a lot of research on social presence for students in online programs. And one of the things that's very important to staying connected in an online program is being able to actually see faces and be able to read expressions and see people while they speak. So we want cameras on for that connection with kids in their classes. Want them to use their official names. These are professional places. So whatever name is their preferred name, they should go by that. Our teachers enable a waiting room before they let students in. It's just a double check that everybody is on their roster. Um, and then just an update on videoing of classes. Um, we have received um, direction that we will not be videoing any classes. So there won't be any video from any of our classes taken. That was a little different than the original direction from the California Department of Education, but I just want you to know your, the classes are not being videoed. Um, your child is not being videoed um, in any of the classrooms. 
for some of you who are hoping that there may be an archive of those to look at for instruction, I'm sorry, we won't have that, um, but I did want to pass that along to all of you. And this is a little information about Zoom. Um, after those first couple weeks, trending towards the positive overall in Zoom, I think our kids are really enjoying seeing each other, at least in some capacity. Um, and so um, that was an area where we're seeing some initial success, um, but we'll be continuing to monitor that. I will share with you, our teachers are sending out some really great, every day there's chains of emails sent out by our teachers with great new tips and tricks about how to engage students in the Zoom room. It's really inspiring. So they're trying a lot of different things to keep it from just being a lecture like I'm doing to you today and make it more engaging um, for students to be in breakout rooms and really talking to each other. I think that you're gonna see um, just really great new practices coming out of this time. Um, and hopefully that becomes really enjoyable for your child. And lastly, I wanted to touch on equity um, before we go to questions. And um, we are working on, on equity here at Miramani in a very targeted way this year. Um, and so I just wanted to share with you a few of our goal areas. We have four areas that we're really working on. The first one is curriculum. Um, and this really comes from a call to action from a lot of alumni, current students, and parents around our curriculum and what we're offering to students and whether our curriculum is truly reflecting diverse perspectives and what we want our kids to know coming out of high school. Um, so this is an important call to action and one we're taking really seriously. Our department, our departments are all setting goals for equity, diversity, and inclusion in their curriculum. Sarah Harris um, is the administrator that oversees our course alike leads who do planning for each of the specific courses. And this is an area they're working on together to really um, look at these goals and set action plans and progress that really meet these goals in the end. So I'm looking forward to publishing a comprehensive list of those goals coming up soon. Another area we're working on is around culture. We've had um, already four um, school-wide breakout sessions specifically addressing race and equity. Um, these are beginnings of conversations which you could take many, many hours to have, um, but they are giving our students an opportunity to practice engaging in conversations about topics that may feel uncomfortable um, and may be unfamiliar to them, but also topics that we're hearing from our kids are so important to them to have a space to have a conversation about. And so those have been um, going really well. We're learning a lot from those and getting a lot from those ourselves um, as, as your staff also. Another area is structures and policies. Um, there's a lot of different things to address here, but one I'd like you to know about is our new bias reporting system. Um, and we do now have a way to, um, for students to submit concerns about bias that might be happening, um, whether it's actually in school, on social media, within a classroom, um, so that we can follow up on that and really take a victim-centered approach to making sure that our students who are suffering from incidents of bias are supported and that they um, are getting follow through on the things that they report. Um, so we'll be sharing also data from that as we start to gather that data. We'll be sharing that out with our parent groups. And lastly, we do have an engaged parent group. We have a parent equity, diversity, and inclusion group. Um, they are doing great work already. They've met a lot. Um, and most recently, they had um, a wonderful break, a wonderful book group um, on how to be an anti-racist facilitated by some of our Miramani teachers here for our parent community. It was a really meaningful event for all who participated on um, being able to collaborate in that way. So looking forward to doing more of those things with you. So other topics of interest, um, athletics, we're, we're slated right now for a December 14th opening. Um, of course, that is contingent on what is happening in our world, but we will be keeping careful tabs on that and reporting out to you as soon as we know anything about that. So stay tuned on athletics. Um, devices and textbook checkout, we have posted hours for that, but if, you're, if you have a device and it just goes out on you, do not wait for a checkout period to come and get one. Please contact us immediately. We'll make that available for you and make sure that you get that as soon as possible. If your child needs a textbook and doesn't have one, please reach out. We'll make sure that we set up a time for pickup so that your child has what they need. I wanted to talk a little bit, just a little bit, about safety, and I, I think this will probably be some follow-up meetings for us to have later in the year. 
Um, this is a hard time to be a parent of teenagers. Um, they want to be out of the house. There's not a lot of places for them to go. Um, and it's they are going to still be out of the house doing things. So just some reminders on like having those, having those conversations with your child about driving within the community, um, safely driving. There's not a lot of people on the road. It can be tempting for our kids to speed and go really fast because the streets are more empty than they used to be. Reminding them about slowing down and driving carefully, particularly in our dark windy roads that we have here in Arinda. Um, also, just keeping in the front of your mind drugs and alcohol. Um, our kids are still kids, and even though we're in a really strange time and some of the things um, that the, some of the bigger gatherings are not happening, um, are you talking to your child about this? Is this part of the conversation in the household? We're going to be providing support to families to have those conversations, and I'm working with um, our wonderful ADAPT group to to develop some parent eds to put out around how to have these conversations during a strange time of COVID when we are um, under some different circumstances. But it will be tempting for our students to be engaging in some of these activities when there's not a lot of outlets for them. And I'm saying that to you with a lot of just vulnerability and honesty because I worry for our kids. And so let's collaborate with each other on how we're going to communicate with them um, and make sure that we're keeping them really safe. Um, this is their senior year. We wanna get everybody through this year successfully and safely. Um, and so we will be continuing this conversation as we go through the year. And lastly, just with COVID, um, that physical and mental well-being of our kids, please reach out if you have any concerns um, and you need um, wellness support. We do have the supports here and we want to be there for our kids. Okay, um, and then activities. Um, we do have club day coming up, so there'll be opportunities to join clubs. And like I said at the beginning of this evening, leadership is planning specific activities to get kids connected, and we're looking in particular to do some things with the senior class. So with that, I'd like to ask um, Ms. Harris if there's any questions I didn't address that came up in the chat that I should speak to um, before we conclude our night. There was not, Ms. Parks. You seem to have answered everything that um, people were asking throughout the course of the evening. All right. Well, if you do have any questions and you just haven't thought of them right now, you absolutely can write me an email um, or Ms. Harris or Mr. Duran or any of the folks who are on the panel tonight. Um, please reach out if you need anything. And with that, um, I'd like to say thank you for your time this evening. I will post the presentation online. So if you have a friend who wasn't able to hear it, they can definitely hear it at their leisure. Um, and I just really appreciate all of you. Looking forward to a great year and go Mats.